And we welcome you to Dodger Poke Report, where this afternoon we have a very, very, very special guest, as you see on your screen, one Mr. Ryan Pepio, who just recently made his Major League debut, had two debuts with Los Angeles here recently. So, Ryan, I want to thank you so much for coming into Dodger Poke Report. No, Casey, thank you for having me. Well, let's back up and let's talk about the biggest day of your life, or certainly one of the biggest days of your life here you've had in the last six months, and, and everybody wants to hear about it. Let's go all the way back to last November. You got married, right? Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, that was definitely the best day of my life. Um, tons of family, friends, my beautiful wife, um, Lilia. So that was a great day. We were down in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, um, where we got married. So uh, um, it was the best day ever. Dubai? Is that where you went for your honeymoon? Is that right? Yeah, that, that's that's correct. That's where we went for our honeymoon. That That's quite the experience. So you get married in November, and then you go on this wonderful honeymoon and then and then you get to make your major league debut all within what three four or five months so well that's been yeah. a whirlwind for you hasn't it yeah it's just been a it's been a really really good six seven months or yeah six months i think a little over six months yeah Plus. yeah and, and last we talked was the off season and you had just finished 2021 in AAA oklahoma city you finished 2022 and boy i'll tell you what you know the beginning of 2022 in oklahoma city look we'll talk about the dodgers performance here in a minute but but your performance in AAA Oklahoma City has been really, really good. I know your last performance Sunday was fantastic. You went five scoreless innings. So talk about how you've gotten comfortable at the AAA level. Uh, definitely just going back to having fun and going and pitching my game, not trying too hard, um, letting the defense work behind me, um, attacking, the, attacking the zone early, getting ahead, and trying to get early contact, being able to go deeper into ball games. Yeah, and, and so – you have the great start, and then and all of a sudden you find out that you're going to get called up, which, which you know, obviously that's a dream come true for anybody who starts playing baseball as a kid. So take us through where you're at, who made the phone call, take us through that. Almost like getting drafted again, that whole moment when you yeah. found out you're getting called up. So I was at a coffee shop in uh, downtown Oklahoma City, um, and I was with my wife, and we were I was packed up, ready to go to Round Rock for a bus trip, like in an hour or so. And... Um, Travis Barbary manager here gives me a call and he goes, Hey, I would have done this in front of the team. Um, but you're going to uh, meet the team in Pittsburgh. So like, come to the field, get to the airport, your flights in two hours. And I'm wow. like, all right. So then I had packed for round rock, which was a hundred degrees. Oh, yeah. I had t-shirts. I had a pair of swim trunks in there. Like, like I was like, you know, I, I'm not ready for Pittsburgh. So I ran back there, like hustled back to my apartment threw a bunch of pants, like some polos, nicer stuff in there. Um, and then hightailed it to the field, grabbed my bag, said bye to like whoever was there already that early. And then um, my wife took me to the airport and then she changed her flight from going back to our home in Scottsdale to go meet me in Pittsburgh. So it was a whirlwind of a day. So you had two choices, either a six hour bus ride down to Round Rock where it's a hundred degrees or a couple hour flight to Pittsburgh to play major league baseball. Those are your two choices? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the the flight part was a little different, but I flew to Dallas, then I had about 25 minutes, then I landed to run to the, uh, my next flight, so I made it there with about 10 minutes to spare. My bags somehow made it, and then I got to Pittsburgh, got to the stadium before the game, about an hour before the game, uh, Sunday night, or Monday night. So, as you can tell, listening to him describe this entire process, one of the really cool things about you that that's really kind of drawn me to to really wanting to, to follow your progress and, and have made that has made me such a big fan. Obviously the talent, you know, everybody's talented at that age, but or at that level. But but when you listen to you talk, just the human side of it, you are not afraid to show everybody out there just how human you are. You know, one of the things that you talked about with your major league debut was I was nervous. I mean, come on, I'm making my major league debut. So talk about that part of it for you. Yeah, it's definitely a nerve wracking experience. It's something like you have to, like to build up all through your entire life. Um, like this is what you strive for and to have all the hard work culminate to one moment and then like go out I went out there a few minutes before I normally do I'm like I followed my same routine like I always have as a starter and kind of just went out there a few extra minutes early just to like try to soak everything in try to like you know settle down the nerves as much as I could it helped a lot um, still nerves and jitters for both of the outings but um, it has to be expected if it's if you're not then Congratulations, good for you. You have some mental strength, but um, it's going to happen. One of the advantages you had, and I was there the night that Will Smith got to catch Clayton Kershaw in Oklahoma City 
2019, Kershaw was down for a rehab assignment. He comes down to Oklahoma City whenever that happens because he's from Texas and his family can come and watch him. So it's a cool experience for him. The, the, and I can tell you that the stands were packed. Everybody came early, an hour too early to see Clayton Kershaw warm up. And at that point, nobody knew who Will Smith was, you know. So I know that had to be a nerve-wracking moment for Will Smith to catch Clayton Kershaw. He did a great job. And I think if you talk to Clayton, he'll tell you, you know, he was very impressed with the job that Will did that night. So you had a catcher to catch you that had kind of been through the same thing you'd been through very recently, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Will was, Will was great. Um, he's caught me before in spring training games past couple of years. Um, so like, we're very comfortable with each other. Um, so, and he's, like you said, he's been through it a couple of years ago. He's younger. Um, he understands the situation, understands the moment. So he was making sure just to guide me along the way and make sure like it was like, uh, he helped me out. So did you make a list of the things that you wanted to make sure and take in, or did you just kind of just roll with the punches? Kind of just roll with the punches. It was just kind of like, all right, like take a look at the lights around you. <laughs> There's four down here. Um, you know, find where your family's at. Um, other than that, it was just kind of uh, try try to keep it same game as sure. possible. Sure. And your first pitch is a blistering 95 mile an hour fastball. So I'm sure after you threw that 95 right down the middle and got strike one, that that really settled you down, didn't it? Yeah, definitely. First pitch throwing a strike helped a lot. Didn't have to press this for the next pitch, like being able to just go out there and be like, all right, like first one's done, first one's out of the way, you got it done. So have some fun now. Okay, so you go through your performance. Evaluate yourself. Tell us what you thought about about how you pitched in the first performance, the second performance. Take us through – just take us through all that. Definitely pleased with the way I performed. I mean, there's a lot of positive takeaways. Um was getting ahead of guys early. Didn't put as many guys away as I wanted to, but when I got myself into traffic, I found ways to get out of it. Um, so, and at the end of the day, I made my debut. Um, I gave the team a chance to win the first time, um, put up a few zeros. I mean, it wasn't pretty, but I did it. Um, so that I'll, I'll take that away from the first one. Definitely would like to throw more strikes and get more in the zone, but there's a lot of jitters, a lot of nerves in there, like trying to battle myself the whole time. So just getting that one out of the way helps. And then the second one, there's a few pitches I went back. Obviously, I had the 0-2 or I had a two-out walk to Rojas. And then um, Paven Smith, I threw a slider that caught more of the plate than I wanted to. Then he got a 0-2 hit. And then I went right at Christian Walker, and he hit a ball out of the park. So, I mean, there's a couple sequences where I would like a couple pitches back. But overall, the second one, after the first two guys, I settled in, threw a lot more strikes, you know, felt more comfortable, but still, like, the nerves and jitters are there. Um, so it's just – it's a new experience as a whole. So you're just out there just trying to have fun, soak it in, but also still compete at the same time. And I'm proud of the way I competed. No, no doubt about it. We're all proud of you for the way that you competed because you did an absolutely fantastic job in both performances. You've been great all year. And, you, you know, going all the way back even to T-ball, then when you move up to, to coach pitch, and then when you move up to 12 and under – 14 and then high school, and then you get to make the varsity team. There's always that eureka moment where you're standing there and you go, you know what, I'm good enough to do this. I I, I am talented enough. I, I I can do this. Have you had that yeah. moment at the major league level? Yeah, I definitely, like, once I, like, threw up a couple zeros in Pittsburgh, like, I had bases loaded, Brian Reynolds up, and, like, he's their best hitter, and then I struck him out, like, okay, like, I can do this. Like, I, it's the same game, still 60 feet, 6 inches to the mound of the plate. Um, I mean, just bigger stage, more people, but at the same time, it's still the same game that I've been playing as a kid. So it's just going out there, having fun and attacking the zone. So isn't Doc wonderful too, dealing with those oh. kind of things? He's the best. Like literally made me feel so special, made it about, not just not about me, but about the team, but like literally made me feel like, Hey, like enjoy this, like have fun. Like we got you. Like I couldn't ask for, ask for anything better. So we talked about all the adrenaline, all the moments that led up to the first pitch and taking the mound and, and your major league experience, everything culminated together. Now let's kind of go to the other side of it. Take us through what the emotions were like after you sat down and realized that, that your first performance was over. A little sigh of relief. Um, <laughs> just, I mean, I definitely continue and keep going. Uh, when they came and said, hey, like that, that's it, that's it. Um, definitely like, dang, like I, I want to keep going. Like I, as a competitor, I always want to keep going. But, like, just sit down and sit back and be like, all right, you just threw up a few zeros in the major league game. Like, 
and good for you. And then just being able to sit there and enjoy the game, like watch the rest of the game, be with the team. Um, Kershaw was coming and talking to me, asking me like tips, like seeing, hey, like, hey, like, do you think about this? Like, what do you think about this? Um, like, what's your reset? Um, and then I've talked to Walker plenty, the same. And then he, oh, there we go. Oh, there we and go. I, <laughs> uh, but I'm like just sitting around and just picking everybody's brain because they've all been through it. And like, whether it, it was Kershaw like sure. 10 plus years ago or Walker five, four or five years ago, Tony a couple years ago, like they all had the same experience. And so like just hearing their sides of the story and what they have and like things that they want to, um, tips and tell me and just they're just there to help me and they wanted to help me which was which was amazing so you get option back down to oklahoma city i think everybody expected that and and your last performance was sunday in round rock where you threw up five zeros in five innings and the thing i think dodgers fans will love about that is you were very efficient about 15 pitches per inning so i kind of wanted to ask you this is a tough question but but i think you'll be willing to answer this is you know you get your major league debut you throw twice for la then you come back down to triple a on a sunday afternoon is there you know, is that kind of a trap game for you? Do you have to, to to create some momentum for that experience, or is it just baseball is baseball? No, it's just baseball is baseball. I have to treat it the same, whether it's a major league game or if it's a triple A game or whatever. Um, I, I um, uh-oh. one second. We're good. Um, I got there. You go. We got you right there. There we go. <laughs> All right. Not a trap game. It's definitely just treat the same game as the same, whether it's a big game or a triple A game. Just go out there, compete, and um, have fun. So, I mean, whether it's a Sunday day game in hot Sugarland, Houston, Texas, or if it's somewhere else, like just go out there and compete and um, throw strikes, make pitches, get people out. So, we're going to book in this thing. We started with the most important day of your life in November when you got married. Last, I think it was November 3rd was the day you got married. And we're going to bookend it with the, the most important thing you've done here recently, and that is your golf game yesterday. How'd it go? Uh, I don't even know if you kept score. It was so cold. <laughs> so wet and rainy. I mean, I was playing pretty good, and then and the rain started to come down. I think I was like three over through five or six, and I was like, all right, I'm playing really well, and I'm really happy with how I'm playing. And then we had like an hour where it was just – crazy rain so we just sat under some trees and hold, held it off and then finished the nine front nine and a couple guys were like i'm freezing like i got a bail and then after that it was just i think we played the nine holes the four of us the rest four that stayed out there and played i think we played it maybe an hour just slowly grip it and rip it while trying to like hold on to your club without i threw one club on it like on accident like i just had took a swing and there just goes the club so it was did you go get it Oh, yeah, I had to. I'm not losing that one. I'm, it's one of my better clubs. Well, you know, you're a major league pitcher now. You're going to have people just running after that club and wanting to sell it, you know? There was nobody on the course. There was nobody on the course. It was, there was our group, and that was it. Hey, Ryan Pepio, you have the world in your hands. What a wonderful experience you've had here recently. So, and the, you know, the cool thing about it is you've had plenty of people in your world that have made sure that you've enjoyed it as you went. You know, so many people do these kind of things. Well, not these kind of things, but they go through life and, they don't enjoy life as they do it and, until it's over. So you do such a great job of taking in the moments as they come. And and uh, I am I hope I don't get to see you very much in Oklahoma City this year, to be honest with you. I hope you end up back in L.A. And I get to watch you on TV instead. So, hey, thank you so much for carving out time for me and Dodger Poke Report and letting Dodgers fans hear from you. Absolutely. Appreciate you having me. Thank you very much.